Hey, what's up? I got some more lore content for you guys. So I got the final reveal for the Bandle Wood expansion today. We got a little bit of catching up to do. I have from Scion to Ziggs to reveal. I know a little bit about uh, Scion. I know a little bit about Nami and I know a little bit about Xerath, but I haven't actually seen anything about Ziggs yet. So let's just get right into it. Let's get all caught up. I'll give my opinion on all the cards and then we'll see what's going to happen. Also, this is the last reveal video, so starting this Thursday, I'll be releasing deck profiles of all the new cards and whatnot, things that I'm experimenting with and things that I'm refining. So with that, let's hop into the first character. We got Scion. Now, I'm not going to watch all the videos. I already watched Scion's um, through Zareth's videos, so I'm just going to go over the cards specifically, talk about each one individually. So Scion is a 7 mana 3, 6 with Overwhelm. When I'm discarded, grant your strongest ally in play. Overwhelm and place me into your deck. I have plus one plus zero for each card you've discarded this game, max seven zero. So this can go up to a 10 six, which is pretty scary because he has Overwhelm and he has a seven cost. Level up, you've discarded or summoned 35 power. And there we go, this is leveled up form. Scion, last breath, summon a Scion returned. When I'm discarded, grant your strongest ally Overwhelm and place me into your deck. So he still has that same effect. Uh, he's no longer gaining attack because presumably you've already done that. So 7 mana, 10, 6 with Overwhelm. Basically Darius stats. Super big boy. However, on last breath, summon a Scion Returned. Scion Returned is another copy of himself that says, when I'm summoned, rally. Okay, so we're going to be swinging twice. So it's quite literally just better Darius. One more mana, similar stats, but way more damage because you get the rally if you kill him. Um... If the opponents block, then they int. If you can force kill him, then you win the game, so that's kind of strong. Scion's Roar of the Slayer. To play, discard a card, kill the weakest enemy, create a Scion in your deck. Okay, so this is his Scion champion spell. Cool. Discard a card and kill the weakest enemy. That's not bad at all. Uh, so you're wanting the opponent to have like at least a 3-drop on the board. Like Let's say they have a uh, three drop and then like a high cost unit then you're trading three for three and you're killing them however if your opponent only has like one big unit or like a big unit and a champion then you're gaining infinite value from this card because you're hitting something that's way worth more than the three mana you spent on it uh and the discard which has discard synergy so you could be getting benefits from that so this card can be pretty insane i think this is really strong for a champion spell all things considered um ancient warmonger we got Overwhelm here, he's a 5-5-5, five, five, five. nice stats. When I'm discarded, grant your strongest ally to zero. Nice. So yeah, this can just be good as a combat trick even, discard combat trick. You just give things plus two plus zero, so nice. Very, very good, very aggressive discard strategy. Uh, Fallen Reckoner, five mana, four, three. Overwhelm, when I'm summoned, grant can't block to the weakest enemy. That's also just very strong. This prevents him from getting chump blocked, essentially. Also, if your opponent only has like a couple blockers, and this just helps you push so much damage if you're wide. Uh, last breath, create a Risen Reckoner. That would be this. When I'm summoned, grant can't block to the weakest enemy. Again, but this is ephemeral. Gotta keep that in mind, but it's a 363. Super easy to summon, super easy to play later on uh, in the mid game turns. 2 mana 3 1 Fallen Rider. When I'm discarded, create a Risen Rider. Okay, so when this is discarded, you get a 4 2 Fearsome for 2. Very scary. So yeah, we're just gaining so much value from discarding. Like, discarding is not even a downside. This, it just helps. So that means it's going to be a pretty strong archetype moving forward. 8 mana 5 4 Lost Soul. When I'm summoned or discarded, create a Twin Blade or Revenant in hand. Twin Blade Revenant is this card here. 4 mana, 4, 3 with Challenger. Good utility. Challenger's super strong keyword. Uh, helps you snipe over things that normal, like you normally can't deal with, uh, like uh, elusives and high value champions. Last breath. Create a Lost Soul in hand. That would be this guy again. So they basically recycle <laughs> into themselves over and over and over and over and over. So that's pretty interesting. Infinite value. Uh, 3 mana, 3, 2, Noble Rebel. Overwhelm, grant me plus two, plus one, once you've discarded three cards this game. Uh, okay, so this card is just permanently going to be a 5-3. Nice, very strong, uh, aggressively studded card. Reborn Grenadier, one mana, three, two. Ephemeral, to play, discard a card. When I'm discarded, summon an exact copy of me. Wow, this can push in a lot of damage in the early game. So we got Legion Grenadier has been reborn as a zombie. Very neat. Oh, I like this design a lot, actually. Ephemeral makes a lot of sense thematically. Uh, he can be very versatile. 
This is also like all this ephemeral stuff kind of tells me a little bit of Hecarim synergy too. So that could be interesting to do SI Scion. I've seen some of my viewers experiment with that. It looks pretty cool. So yeah, I'll be down to try something like that. Salt and Stitches to play. Discard a card. Summon a Reborn Grenadier. Okay, here it is. And give it plus two plus zero this round. Wow. If you discard another copy of it, then you're summoning two of them. One of them has two uh, plus two plus zero. Yikes. That is a lot of damage. It's very scary. Uh, Grave Physician, 2 mana 2-2, two, two. discard a card to draw a unit. Wow, force draw. That's kind of sick, actually. You discard Grenadier, you get to summon it, so it's a 2-2 two, two, and a 3-2, uh, and you get to draw. This is looking very explosive. It kind of reminds me of uh, Butcher Keeper plays from SI, where it's just like, that's a lot of damage on turn 2, or that's a lot of damage on turn 3. Like, if you're just not prepared for it, or if you open bad, this deck is going to eat you alive. Uh, Weapons of the Lost. Deal 3 to a unit and summon a Trifarian Shieldbreaker. I believe that is the 3 mana 5 4. Um, okay. I This card sucks. Deal 3 to a unit and then summon a Shieldbreaker. Uh, for 8 and it's slow? Yeah, probably not. Alright. Moving on to Nami. Nami is a 3 mana 2 3 with a tune, so she pays 1 mana for herself. Not bad in terms of spells, at least. When you cast a spell, grant plus 1 plus 0 to the weakest other ally that isn't a mobile. That's pretty interesting. Um, uh, like uh, future proofing here. So anything else that comes out besides Monkey Idol is a mobile. She will not like miss buff it and then you can't do anything with it and stuff like that. So that's nice. Good to have that here. Um, the buff is permanent. That's important to keep in mind. So, yeah, she just, whenever you cast a spell, there's no cap on this. You can just cast spells infinitely and, wow, okay, cool. That means that spells that generate another one and let you double cast, like Retreat Return, are very valuable uh, with Nami on the board. Okay, so level up. You've gained 7 plus spell mana this game. That's so easy to do. Attuning any amount, uh, just floating mana, I believe will gain you the spell mana. That She's just so easy to level, so that's always going to happen. We're going to see her level up animation quite a lot. 3 mana, 3, 4. Nah, decent stats actually, yeah. I like that. When she's already leveled, she's a bit harder to deal with. When you cast a spell, grant plus 2, plus 1 to the weakest other ally that isn't a mobile. So that's interesting as she can never um, buff herself. She's just on the board and buffing other people, which is cool because she's a support. So this makes sense thematically. I like that. Uh, just giving elusives, like cheap things, buffs. Then yeah, you can play like Nami Zoo, essentially. So... I like that two zoo strategies are like being introduced into the game. One being Tristana, summoning a bunch of cheap units going wide, hitting with impacts, and then Nami, uh, summoning a bunch of cheap units going wide, playing spells and buffing them. That's that's really neat. I like these playstyles a lot. So we have Nami's Ebb. So this is her um, champion spell. Deal two randomly to an enemy or the enemy nexus and create a flow. So mini make it rain instead of dealing three to. Uh, three things, or dealing one to three things, you know, this is deal two. Okay. Uh, create an army, okay. You also create a flow. Flow would be a heal. Heal an ally or your nexus two and create ebb and flow. So you get the triple package. Okay, so for six mana, you can play this entire card. And it's going to deal two, then it's going to heal two, and then it's going to deal two again. Oh, and heal two again. Oh, that's sick. So you're dealing four, healing four at the end of the day for six mana randomly split damage though but your heal you get to choose um that's pretty good for one card i think that's really good if you have the mana to cast it because they're also triple casting for nami which is insane abyssal guard four mana two three fearsome when you cast a spell give me two zero. Oh, so other things are also going to be getting hit <laughs> with um buffs even if you don't have nami this is going to cast on itself if you do have nami then you're doubling up on buffs so that's pretty scary this has fearsome He's pretty easy to get rid of, though. 3 HP by turn 4, yeah. He he can get out of control, though. He, he definitely can. Uh, Avatar of the Tide, 6 mana, 4, 5. If you would get a mana gem, instead refill your spell mana. When you cast a spell, create in hand a random spell that costs 3 or less and give it fleeting. So this is a paragraph. There's a lot of stuff going on in this card that's just a 6 mana, 4, 5. Uh, if you would get a mana gem, Instead, refill your spell mana. So if you play mana gem generators, you get spell mana instead. It's kind of interesting, I guess. When you cast a spell, create 
in hand another random spell that costs three or less and give it fleeting so you can just like machine gun spells if you have the attune for it and if you just have the mana for it if you're playing a bunch of cheap uh spells then this thing is just generating you a whole lot okay yeah this this feels kind of crazy especially if you're playing a bunch of like one cost spells five mana three three ephemeral attune for every two spells you play in a round grant other allies one one so we get shelly oh that's so cute i love shelly um one mana like two one attune is one of the cutest cards in the game happy to see more art with those so yeah this is super good very powerful ambient effect as well if it just doesn't get dealt with it's gonna get out of control too uh we're talking like mid game though this is weird because i think like a lot of people are gonna have their win conditions also coming together so while you're sitting here developing and playing spells like they're just gonna beat you over probably but we'll have to see how the overall power of the deck functions three mana four three very aggressively statted that is wow and it has a tune that is crazy uh sure three mana four three with a tune that's actually a good card uh all things considered that can trade up into anything and that can beat into anything most things can also kill into it by turn three but still i mean that's just nice if you're buffing it with any amount of hp at any time then this is a good card marai songstress uh two mana three two when i'm summoned if you have cast a spell this round grant me elusive nice just elusive cheese not not bad at all marai warden when i'm summoned summon a random one cost follower oh okay so it's just a two and one deal it's more one cost energy we can play taskmaster um such like that not bad here we go marai great mother four mana three three when i'm summoned create five random six cost spells in your deck lower their cost to three huh create five random six cost spells in your deck lower their cost to three holy that's kind of cool six cost spells i wonder if you can get um what's it called uh the jellyfish card. How do I always forget this card's name? It's one of my favorite cards, too. Mind Meld. That's what it's called. It's like, um, if you can get Mind Meld from this, make it cost three. Hey, that's kind of nice. So, Tidal Wave. Deal one to two randomly targeted enemies. Create Crashing Wave. Deal two to four randomly targeted enemies. Create Colossal Wave. Deal four to all enemies and the enemy Nexus. So this is like go hard where you play one it goes into your deck you play another it goes back into your deck and if you get to the third one okay so this is pretty interesting if you play like zap spray fin and stuff you can force draw these kind of cards depending on the deck and what else you have in there but yeah okay I mean it's very powerful if you can get to colossal wave that's just insane that's almost game winning to be honest almost but we shall see next we have Zareth the uh, new ascended so that's very important to consider is that sun disc synergy um and maybe the intended route for his deck we'll see four mana three three ooh weak stats weird little orb guy when an allied landmark is destroyed deal one to the weakest enemy so he's uh pseudo removal level up you've destroyed four allied landmarks this game so that's cool he can just come out leveled up same with azir so the first thing that I think of then is you can play Sun Disk with Triple Azir, Triple Zareth. Just play a whole bunch of cards, let Azir level, play the um, Landmark Destruction Synergy with Zareth, play it a little bit more control style, and then you're able to play them both. Sun Disk comes out, and then you get uh, Emperor deck from uh, Azir, and then you get Zareth's Super Form, which I will read here in a second. 4 mana, 4-4. Four, four. When an allied landmark is destroyed, deal 3 to the weakest enemy. Wow. That is, yeah, hard removal now. 4 mana, 5, 9, big boy, super saiyan god, Zareth. Round start, deal 5 to the weakest enemy, and the enemy nexus. So yeah, this is this is very good. If an enemy unit would die, obliterate it instead. Nice little passive effect. Now you'd think that this wouldn't mean a whole lot, but it actually does. So like, your opponents can't like revive things anymore. Uh, obliteration is actually very, very insane, especially if you're fighting SI. Um, so Harrowing would get absolutely destroyed by this and things like that. This is a nice little um, sentence here for Zareth. Right of the Arcane, destroy an allied landmark or one of your mana gems to deal four to an enemy unit. Very strong. Um, yeah, destroy an ally landmark, deal four. Four is a huge number for removal, so Shurima having access to four damage removal is kind of insane. 
uh, Endless Devout, 3 man 3-3. Three, three. Last breath, summon Sarcophagus. Sarcophagus, count down 3, or when I'm destroyed, summon a Restored Devout. Restored Devout is a 1-man 5-3, so it has Destruction Synergy. It's also uh, one cost landmark that is generated from this. Boom, 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 bop. E easy clap. Has Countdown 3, so you have a couple turns to be able to destroy it if needed. Risen Altar, Countdown, or when I'm destroyed, summon Dami Yin the Unbound. Oop, skipping fast. Dami Yin, here we go. 7 mana, 7, 6 with Overwhelm and Spell Shield. Wow, that's insane. That is absolutely bonkers. Uh, Herald of the Magus, 5 mana, 4, 4. When I'm summoned, if you've destroyed 4 ally landmarks this game, grant your champions everywhere 2 2 Overwhelm. That's bonkers. This is also really good for Sun Disc because then your champions have Overwhelm. Good game ender. 3 mana, 3, 3. Waste Walker, Overwhelm. When an ally landmark is destroyed, grant me 1 1. When an ally landmark is destroyed, grant me Okay, yeah. And this can go up and up and up. This can get pretty strong. Has Overwhelm. Construct the Desolation. Create a Ruinous Acolyte or Obelisk of Power. That's one of these. So this is a 2 man 2 1. Fearsome. Play. Destroy an ally landmark to grant all Ruinous Acolytes everywhere 1 1. So you can swarm with this guy. Play a whole bunch of them. Basically. Obelisk of Power. Countdown 3. Or when I'm summoned, grant the strongest ally to 0. Okay. And this is just a... Um, oh, okay. So this is an activator and this is a target. So we have to think of it like that. Sort of like the slay stuff. That's cool. 5 mana, 5, 4. Sand Seer, Fearsome. Draw 1. If you draw a landmark, repeat this effect. Wow. Situationally broken. This could be a draw 2. And they're landmarks. Nice. Unleashed energy. Give an ally to 1 this round or destroy an ally landmark to give an ally 4 to. Okay, this can get out of control as well. If you're getting benefits from destroying the landmark, then you're getting something 4-2 and like a big thing, right? Like, ideally, you're getting Dami Yin. That's insane. That's so strong. Xerath could actually kind of function by himself, I'm seeing. Uh, I don't know how strong that's going to be, but wow. There's a couple different directions, and I like that. Servitude of Desolation. Summon a stasis statue to store all allied units and landmarks that died or were destroyed this round. So this is the Zonia's effect. Uh, so, like, let's say you get completely board wiped. I mean, let's go with a simple example of you get Ruinationed. Then you play Servitude of Desolation. You summon the stasis statue. It puts everything that you got, like, everything you lost into a statue. And then on round start, you'll summon it all back. So it's basically a wide res. Uh, Mercy ult. Uh -huh. Old Mercy ult from Overwatch. That's kind of crazy. This can also be situationally broken. Um, yeah, could be game winning um, at the perfect circumstance, but those are going to be a little few and far between. People are going to play around it probably if, uh, if it's meta, so we shall see where that goes as well. Now, finally getting into the newest and the last reveal, I believe, Mr. Ziggs himself. Pretty excited for this. Uh, I like Ziggs a lot. I remember when he was released in League way, way back in the day. So, let's hope they did my boy good and the transition to Legends of Runeterra. Another day, another explosion! This'll be a blast. My boy is a 3-mana three 3-4. Three, nice. Bandle Sharima. Interesting they went with Sharima for him and not PNZ, but we already got Caitlyn, so I guess that makes sense. Ziggs, Attack. Deal. Oh, I think we got Tristana too. Isn't she also PNZ? Okay. Um, attack. Deal one to my blocker and the enemy Nexus. Uh, uh okay. Uh, that's that's pretty strong. So he's promoted to attack. He, he just wants to attack. You've destroyed four allied landmarks this game. Okay. Well, we got Zerus energy. There's another reason why he is Sharima. You've destroyed four allied landmarks this game. So they're gonna be leveling up together. Ziggs Zareth, huh? Okay. You throw a bomb at one bandle gunner, you throw it at us all. Yeah, that's why they're called explosives. <laughs> Light the fuse. One, two, come so that effectively makes them trade up into four HP units. Whoa, whoa, bouncing bomb. Deal two to an enemy or deal one to two enemies. Good flexibility, very strong card. The fact that you get to choose is choose that is insane all right get out played that's a fun effect very cute animation okay uh. 
I saw Mega Inferno Bomb and everything. Uh, Explosive Minefield, so that's Zig's E. When I'm summoned or destroyed, stun the strongest enemy. And it's, uh... It's not a countdown, so it's just gonna be here all the time. I see Mega Inferno Bomb down here. It's trying to be sneaky. I'll see you later, though. Alright, so that's a double stun. And a Grumpy Rock Bear. Okay. He leveled really easily this game. <laughs> Very fun level up animation. Three mana, four, five. Nice. Attack, deal two to my blocker and the enemy next as well. So it kind of reminds me of Talia's effect a little bit. When an allied landmark is destroyed, deal two to the enemy nexus. So he's just lobbing bombs from uh, the back row straight onto the nexus every time a landmark is destroyed. Makes sense thematically. I like that effect. It does have a lot of synergy with Xerath. So Xerath is going to be popping enemy units. Ziggs is going to be dealing direct damage to the enemy Nexus, and they're just going to be taking damage. It's uh, damage control. Fire in the hole. Feels like power crap swine. Bring the boom. Uh huh. Ground start, create inspection pass. Okay. Alright, son, let's not have a repeat of last time. What do you mean? That guy's eyebrows grew back. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, I don't know about that block. Why not six six to five four? Whatever. Destroy a landmark. Deal three. <laughs> Mega Inferno Bomb. Oh, I gotta see that. That's his ult. Uh, wait, what? Mega Inferno Bomb deal one to all enemies, then do it again. So it's just two to all enemies for seven. That includes the Nexus or nah? Nah. Huh. That's quite expensive for deal two to all enemies. It might be too strong at 6, though. Uh, okay. So, Scrappy Bomb. Deal 1 to the enemy Nexus. Minefield Stun. Inspection Pass. Destroy an ally to deal 3 to anything. Wow, okay, so Inspection Pass is not just to the Nexus. This is to anything. The ability to choose is also very strong here. Yo, Ziggs is sick, actually. He's a really cool damage control style. Yeah, it just kind of feels like, like a Swain as type deal. Or like a TF type deal. He's just a damage um, control based playstyle. Very simple. It's going to be very easy to build this guy and um, win with him. Very, 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 very simple. Uh, yeah, him and Zareth. I could see it. I, I, I really could. I think that might be a little slow. And we could take Ziggs a bit more aggressive since he does deal damage to the enemy Nexus. So maybe like a burn strat could also work. That is cool. So what I like about Bandle so far is one simple keyword, flexible. Like there's so many aspects of the champions, the cards that are just flexible. Like I know that in two or three weeks, everything's going to be refined. All the decks are going to make sense and everything is going to be, you know, set in stone. But I think there's a lot of cool flexibility to think about and build about. It's not like super simple prior to the release of cards because people saw, you know, Aurelia and it's like, oh, we're going to play a Zero Aurelia. And then people made like ideas for the deck and then the, the cards came out and then the deck didn't really change from first idea phase to, oh, now we have the cards in our hand phase. So not a lot of that has been going on, I don't think. Of course, we'll see when the cards are actually given to us, if that is true or not. But I have really high hopes that there are going to be a lot of different things to try and different things to play. I think this feels a lot like the Bilgewater expansion, where just a big pool of cards are being added to the game. Just a big injection of playstyles. I'm super excited for. Uh, Ziggs, Ziggs, Ziggs. Bomber Twins. When I'm summoned, create a random landmark that costs two or less in hand. Okay, cool. On summon, just create a landmark. Sure. Good generator. Uh, eight mana, eight, six arsenal. Okay, I have a random keyword for each other landmark you destroy this game. So he's going to be summoned. He's going to be a big boy. He's going to have overwhelm, elusive, challenger, uh, spell shield, everything. He's just going to come down with literally every keyword known to man. Uh, if you can pl 
play enough landmark destruction. Yordle Contraption, destroy a landmark or create two random multi-region followers in hand. Okay, and that is it. That is it. Let's go. We finally covered every new card. Um, said we have a couple of things over here that weren't shown. What is this? Wait. When you play a follower, summon an exact copy. When you create, when you play a create a spell, cast it again. This is insane. If you actually like resolve value from this, the thing is it's really late. Um, eight mana, so yeah. Hopefully you can actually get value from this, and you're not dead, or you already won the game. Tail cloak matriarch. Each round, the first time you recall a follower, summon an exact ephemeral copy. That's pretty strong too if you're doing recall synergy. Uh, Shelf oak. When you pick a card. From randomly selected options, create a copy and hand reduce its cost by one. This is also insane if it just gets to resolve value. Like these are insane value cards, but the thing is, like they come down late. Lady of Blood. When you discard a non-fleeting unit, create a fleeting copy of it in hand. Good discard synergy. Yeah, just create a fleeting copy. You get to play it again anyway, so uh, no loss really. Um, I like that discard is trying to minimize the losses of actually discarding. That makes it a, a very powerful archetype. And they want to support it. It's pretty obvious. Uh, yep. Yeah, okay. Now we're caught up on everything. Let's go. That was a speed run and a half. That that took a lot, actually. There's a lot of champions that were revealed this time around. Just each and every day is like boom champion, boom champion, boom champion. But yeah, that was a lot of fun revealing. Pretty excited to get into the the decks. I want to play Poppy day one, of course. I want to play Tristana day one. Kate Timo is gonna be a lot of fun. I want to play some Nami. Oh, it's gonna be awesome. And that's it for this one. Please like and subscribe if you thought this video was informative or entertaining. It really helps me out since I'm still trying to grow. I'll be releasing more deck profiles, guides, and gameplay highlights in the near future. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one. Laters!